And there's kind of a huge terror in me because I think um, everyone has a very strong idea of what uh, Prince Charming is, and I'm sure lots of people have a very strong idea of what their Prince Charming is, but we've stayed away from that, and he's never actually referred to as Prince Charming, he's just referred to as a prince. So I kind of tried to get rid of that element that, that comes with um, what, what came in the cartoon and just take the script for what it was and the prince for who he is and uh, worked very closely with Ken leading up to starting filming on who this young man was and what his background was and uh, and we've added in things, you know, things that were in the script and we focused on them as well and in terms of building his background in the, in the original version in the, in the cartoon that Disney made. Um, you don't really know very much about the prince until you actually see him. Whereas in this version, we learn that he's he's been at war for five years. He's he's seen a few things. He's lived a, a very different life to what you would consider just the, the the prince charming version of the princes you can see in all these these different type of Disney films. He's a much more uh, intricate, intri interesting character. I, I love working with Ken. I've loved working with Ken since the first um, rehearsal I had with him when I realised that this this wasn't going to be a kind of straightforward telling of a story that everyone knows, that we were all going to have to dive in and, and create characters from scratch that were that were different and, and, and never been understood properly before. And I've had an, a really amazing time working with Ken um, from the books that he gives me to read, from the questions he asks me about this young prince, things that I've not thought about, or things that surprise me, or, or things that I can gush to him about, oh, this is exactly how the prince feels, or he'll ask me something and I go, I have no idea what the answer to that question is. I'll have to go away and think about that. So Ken challenges me as an actor every day and challenges the way I'll, I'll play a scene and we'll have really great discussions about what's going on and what people's motives are and, and also what kind of character the prince is that it's not as straightforward as playing a scene with what needs to happen, but playing a scene with this element of a character who's, who's, who's very alien from me, and Ken's been great at diving into and exploring that um, with me. The first time I walked into the ballroom set was amazing. You know, a lot of uh, these movies, they use CGI to make these kind of magical worlds, but with Cinderella, we'd actually built these magical places, this ballroom that was the size of a football field, filled with hundreds of supporting actors in amazing colourful costumes and these chandeliers with real candles on them, so it, it really felt like a, a fairy tale come alive. Um, I loved making this film. There's, there's, there's never a day on set that we didn't do something special and unique and, and magical. But of course, I loved all my scenes with Cinderella, which were a joy. But I particularly loved building a relationship with the king, uh, played by Derek Jacobi. And we, we managed to, to have these wonderful scenes where you can see a, a lighter, funnier side to the prince and uh, the, the relationship that he's got with his dad, which I think is a really beautiful one. But I think he goes through a huge change from the start, from when he meets her and with um, what happens with his father during the film and, and how he learns to kind of be his own man and, and, and to stand up for the things he doesn't agree with. Um, and then you have this amazing character of, of Cinderella who is faced with such huge challenges and how she deals with them with humility and, and kindness. Uh, and it's something that I think is just amazing human quality. And I think you take these two characters and you take the best qualities that are within them and over the course of the film, you see those qualities be pushed and tested. And actually the, the, the connection they have with each other, even though they're far apart, brings those best qualities out and brings them to the points that they need to get to be together in order to have that union that gives such strength to what this love story is about, love. And it is about two people and about what they would do for each other and what factors change them and make them into the people that they become at the end of the film. Hey movie fans, Valerie here with a cool Avengers movie fact. Did you know that the SHIELD research facility was actually NASA's Planbrook station? 
the world's largest space environment simulation chamber used to test rocket engines and space stations. Also housed at the station is a hypersonic tumor facility and cryogenic propellant tank. <gasps> wow, now that's pretty amazing. That's it for today. Subscribe to keep up to date on all the latest releases and remember, walls have ears. Bye bye.